Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I have listened to some of the contributions from the gentleman on the other side of the house. And then, Madam Speaker, I really have to say that the opposition must stop speaking out of two sides of their mouth. Madam Speaker, they say that they were not consulted on the budget. And they need to be consulted on the budget. But Madam Speaker, just a few weeks ago, the Prime Minister invited all of the members of the opposition to the State House to discuss the development prospects for Dominica. He had a panel of persons to, to lead the discussions on development prospects for Dominica. Madam Speaker, not one of them showed up. None of them. Madam Speaker, I quote from the Prime Minister's statement at that consultation. He says, Madam Speaker, my assigned role this morning is to welcome you to this event. I am here like you as a participant. I have brought my pen and paper, and I am here to learn from your perspectives and experiences of the realities that confront us and to work with you to formulate a best case strategy going forward. Madam Speaker, all of the members of the opposition were invited to come and be part of this discussion on the development prospects for Dominica. For them to say what they, how they perceive the country should be going, how, what they want to see happen in Dominica. Well, but they didn't come, Madam Speaker. But they come to the House today and last week to say that they were not consulted. But they had the opportunity, and they chose not to take advantage of it. So these are sour grapes now, Madam Speaker, coming to complain. But Madam Speaker, I think sometimes we fail to appreciate the situation that we experienced less than two years ago. Madam Speaker, less than two years ago, 90% of our GDP was wiped out by Tropical Storm Erica. And Madam Speaker, any fair-minded person would say that Dominica has come a very long way since then. <laughs> Madam Speaker, despite the devastation to the country, this government was able to maintain and expand, expand, Madam Speaker, our social safety net program. Madam Speaker, last year we ensured that Social Security pensions would be no less than $300 a month. We introduced a health insurance pilot scheme to help young mothers. We increased the allowance paid to persons 70 years and older by 50% to $300 a month. We continued to provide for students at university. We expanded our small business development support. And Madam Speaker, the list goes on and on. And all of this, Madam Speaker, while attending to the repair, rehabilitation, repla re and replacement of damaged infrastructure. So, Madam Speaker, this is the context in which I viewed this new budget that is before this House. Madam Speaker, I listened with amazement and indeed, Madam Speaker, with horror when the leader of the opposition stood in this honorable house and made what I consider to be an outrageous statement, Madam Speaker, that a government led by him would immediately suspend all geothermal activities and apply the funds identified for geothermal to wind, solar, and hydro. Madam Speaker, Dominica is on course to meeting our goals to have the entire island powered by renewable energy by 2020, Madam Speaker. Clean energy, Madam Speaker. Cheaper energy, Madam Speaker. And the leader of the opposition wants to send us back another 10, 15 years. But Madam Speaker, just out of curiosity, where on Dominica do we have enough available flat land to have the huge solar farms that one would require to power the entire island? Where? Where? And Madam Speaker, we may, we may be able to put some solar panels to power a building. But if you're talking about providing power for the entire island, we're talking about having acres of flat land to put solar panels. 
So, Madam Speaker, we have to ensure that when we say things, we know what it is that we're speaking about. It must be practical. Madam Speaker, the comment from the leader of the opposition also displays an astonishing lack of understanding of how things work, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, people do not just give you money. People not give, do not give you millions of dollars because they like you. People will give you millions of dollars for PR purposes. That's what the, that's what the um, member for um, the Honorable Isaac Baptist says. For PR purposes, Madam Speaker, $80 million for PR purposes? Seriously? I mean, Madam Speaker, for you to get that kind of money, you have to get those persons to first buy in to your project concept, Madam Speaker. They must be convinced that it's a viable project. They must be convinced of the value and benefit to the country. Madam Speaker, the Honorable Senator Isaac Baptist wants us to believe that the World Bank, that the New Zealand government, that Sid Doc, would do not believe that the geothermal project is a sustainable project, but they're putting money in it. $30 million, $5.4 million in a project that you do not think is sustainable. And this is what the Senator wants the people of Dominica to believe. <laughs> Madam Speaker, Dominica's geothermal negotiation team, which has been ably led by Ambassador Henderson, has spent years discussing and negotiating with all of these entities that have now agreed to put millions of dollars into this project. Madam Speaker, this is after years of carrying out studies, getting experts to come to Dominica, negotiating documents, meeting with stakeholders. Madam Speaker, it is not easy getting money out of institutions such as the World Bank. Anybody who has had to deal with the World Bank knows how difficult it is for you to get money from them. And Madam Speaker, the World Bank is 100% behind the geothermal project. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the government of New Zealand has committed $5 million worth of technical assistance to the project. They have done so because they know the value of it, Madam Speaker. Every time I speak with the High Commissioner to Dominica from New Zealand, Madam Speaker. She's very excited about the project. She has been pushing to ensure that Dominica gets the technical assistance that it needs to ensure that this project is coming to fruition, Madam Speaker. PR purposes? Unsustainable? <laughs> Madam Speaker, not only are our partners convinced that this government is on the right track, but they also see this project as setting an example for the rest of the region to follow, Madam Speaker. This is where we are. This is where we are, Madam Speaker. Dominica is on the right track. I am sure, Madam Speaker, that our partners would be horrified to hear that the leader of the opposition would throw away all of the hard work and planning that has gotten us to this point in favor of starting back at zero. And I just want to say to him, Madam Speaker, that the zero he would be starting back with would include zero funds, because the commitment that was made for all of those millions is for geothermal development, Madam Speaker. Geothermal, not wind, not hydro, not solar. It's for geothermal. And those funds are not transferable, Madam Speaker. So he would have to find his own source of money to fund his wind, his solar, and his hydro, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, the, the leader of the opposition stated in what, in his rebuttal to the budget, that the budget discloses no real investment to secure sustainable jobs. Really, Madam Speaker? Did we listen to the same budget? Madam Speaker, does he expect the government to open up a factory? But wait, but wait, Madam Speaker. I am sure I heard the Prime Minister say that thanks to the support of the government, 
the Dominica coconut products, the largest manufacturing plant in Dominica, will once more resume operations. Thanks to the government, the support of the government. Madam Speaker, in three years, three years, that company is expected to employ at least 150 people. And those sustainable jobs, Madam Speaker? Madam Speaker, it is a fact that the government cannot employ everybody. It simply cannot. What the government must do, Madam Speaker, is to create an enabling environment for jobs to be created. And this is what this government has done, Madam Speaker. This is, this is what this government is doing. Madam Speaker, the government met with different stakeholders in the private and the public sector. And, they took, and we took on board as many of their suggestions as we were able to. In fact, Madam Speaker, I am sure that I heard the president of the DA, DAIC say that she was very pleased with this year's budget and that all of their concerns were taken on board. Yeah. That is people participation in the budget process, Madam That's Speaker. Right. The government is consulting and taking account of the views of the public and private sector in its budget, budget um, process. No sustainable jobs, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, what is the greatest challenge and complaint that businesses have? Lack of access to affordable financing. Yeah. Madam, this, Madam Speaker, this year the Minister of Finance announced that the government is making available to manufacturers $15 million at concessionary rates, Madam Speaker. $15 million. Madam Speaker, that is money that they can use to expand their businesses, to buy input, to upgrade their plant. And Madam Speaker, when you expand, you need more workers. What does that translate to, Madam Speaker? Sustainable jobs. Sustainable jobs. And of course, Madam Speaker, that's in addition to making $10 million available for agriculture last year and $15 million available for the tourism industry. And so, Madam Speaker, the government has taken a deliberate decision to ensure that affordable financing is available. All you have to do is put yourself in a position to take advantage of it. That's all you have to do, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, I want to make the point that with those facilities, those facilities were made available after government consulted with those sectors, Madam Speaker. Those sectors said, this is what we want. These are the terms and conditions under which we want it. And the government said, OK. And it made it available to them, Madam Speaker. So Madam Speaker, when the Prime Minister was outlining all of the sources and avenues that was being made available to help and encourage businesses, Madam, I, Madam Speaker, I looked across at the Honorable Member for Rosa Central. He was clapping. He was clapping. Madam Speaker, you could tell he was saying, wow, boy, boy, that's good. Boy, that government working. Huh? That's what you were saying. Huh? <laughs> that's what you were saying. <laughs> but of course, Madam Speaker, I think his face fell a little bit when he realized, when the Prime Minister said, well, that, those funds will not be made available for refinancing. So there's a, little bit, there's a little bit of disappointment there, Madam Speaker. But he sees that this is a progressive budget, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, under the Citizenship by Investment program, we have five approved development projects. And two of those projects, Madam Speaker, are very advanced. Madam Speaker, when you visit the Kapinski site and the Jonga Bay site, is a hub of, of activity, Madam Speaker. Things are happening. Think people, the people are working. Mm -hmm. Work is going on there, Madam Speaker, at a very fast pace. And Madam Speaker, between those two sites alone, 200 people are employed. And Madam Speaker, work is also ongoing on the Morocco Hotel. And we also anticipate that that hotel will be completed in the not too dis distant future. Madam Speaker, 
when these hotels are open, there will be jobs for managers, boutique owners, housekeeping and maintenance, Madam Speaker, groundskeepers, security officers. And Madam Speaker, that's just on the hotel site. You have the spin-offs, the farmers. They must supply the, ho the hotel with fish. You have the people engaged in pork and poultry. They have the opportunity to provide pork and poultry uh, to, the, to the hotels. We have an abattoir where these meats can be properly processed, Madam Speaker. And all of that is part of a plan, Madam Speaker. We are working towards ensuring that we put ourselves in a position where we can provide quality products, Madam Speaker. We, can, we have an abattoir, we can ensure that the birds and the pigs are properly slaughtered and are properly sliced and properly packaged to sell to those hotels, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker, there are opportunities for florists to ensure that the hotels are kept pretty with flowers and so on. The, the farmers, the fishermen, and Madam Speaker, we say that there isn't work for the youth. Madam Speaker, these are opportunities that are available for the youth. How do they position themselves to be able to, to provide services to those hotels? Should they not get together, Madam Speaker, and look at creating different businesses that can help supplement or complement the hotels? Should they not come together and begin already to have greenhouses that can produce or grow trees that, that can be used by the hotel in landscaping their, their, their premises? Should they not look at getting together to provide other services, Madam Speaker, to the hotels? So the, the possibilities there are endless. And all of those, Madam Speaker, are sustainable jobs sustainable jobs. But Madam Speaker, the government has not stopped there. The government has created the enabling environment for people to set up and improve their businesses to be able to supply the demand that these hotels will bring. And so Madam Speaker, money has been made available for small business development. And I am sure my colleague, the minister responsible for small business would speak to all of the many incentives and initiatives that her ministry is supervising, Madam Speaker. But you would have heard some of our colleagues speak about the benefits that have been derived thus far from the $13.5 million that has been spent on small business in the last financial year, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we saw that a beautiful bag was brought to Parliament and displayed by the Honorable Representative for the Sufria Constituency, uh, Honorable uh, Charles, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, it was a beautiful bag. It looks like it is very well crafted and it's a very high standard, Madam Speaker. And I want to congratulate her constituent for doing that. And, and she explained to the House, Madam Speaker, that this was made possible because her constituent was the recipient of a small business grant. That is the quality of work that our people can produce, Madam Speaker, once they are supported. And this is what this government is doing, providing support to, to people like that, Madam Speaker. And perhaps, Madam Speaker, when Jungle Bay Resort opens, she may have a small boutique at Jungle Bay to sell her stuff. Or perhaps at Kapinski Hotel, she may have a, a small boutique there. And maybe, who knows? Eventually, she may be able to export her products, Madam Speaker. So this, Madam Speaker, is what the government is doing. We are empowering people to be able to provide for themselves, to provide for their families, Madam Speaker. So now is the time. We have to be innovative. We have to be entrepreneurial. And we have to seize the opportunity, Madam Speaker. The, 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 environment has been created, we must seize it. Now is the time. Now, Madam Speaker, I want to address the issue of electoral reform. 
And again, Madam Speaker, I go back to how I started, that the opposition seems to speak out of both sides of their mouth. Yes. Madam Speaker, the opposition says that they want electoral reform. Yes. But uh, really and truly, do they really want no, electoral no, reform, I, Madam I, Speaker? I, I don't think so. Madam Speaker, they said that they wanted voter identification cards. They said that they wanted a cleanup of the electoral register. But Madam Speaker, when we brought the legislation to Parliament, they brought their protesters outside Parliament to agitate against it. Do they want it, Madam Speaker? And Madam Speaker, what is their excuse? That the government is trying to legalize bribery and treating. Madam Speaker, they hang their hat on a statement that was made by electoral observers from the Commonwealth that there were multiple instances of treating and bribery, including the transportation of electors to the island to vote. Madam Speaker, that statement is flawed. And I will tell you why. That very issue has been litigated in the court. And not only the courts of Dominica, Madam Speaker, the courts in the region. And the courts have consistently ruled that the facilitation of, the tra of transportation of voters to vote in and of itself does not constitute bribery, Madam Speaker. The courts have said so. They have said so. They have also said what can constitute bribery and treating. And Madam Speaker, based on what the courts have said can constitute bribery and treating, the government felt that it was necessary to spell that out in the legislation so that everybody would know what constitutes bribery and treating in accordance with how the courts have interpreted it, Madam Speaker. That is what the government brought to this house, Madam Speaker. And they protest. But they protest. But, Madam Speaker, this, some of us do not seem to want to educate ourselves, Madam Speaker. It seems that we prefer to practice scaremongering, frightening the people, instead of seeking to educate the people, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the government has on many occasions signified, signified its commitment to introducing voter ID cards for elections. And Madam Speaker, that necessarily involves a cleanup of the electoral list or the electoral register. And Madam Speaker, you will recall that at first the Electoral Commission had wanted to introduce the OECS multi-purpose identification card or the MPID card. And they informed later that they had problems with the supplier. I think the supplier had sold its business and so on. And so they had to switch to another system which was even more sophisticated than the MPID, Madam Speaker. And so the Electoral Commission requested that the government provide it with the resources to implement electoral reform. They asked government to make the funds available for the new ID card system and for the implement implementation of the confirmation exercise, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, what the Electoral Commission asked for, the government agreed to. Government has approved over $6.1 million, Madam Speaker, for that project. $6.1 million. And government has also approved the staff requirement that the Electoral Commission has asked for. Now, Madam Speaker, it is my understanding that the Electoral Commission has proceeded to commi commission the development of the modern identification card system that the system has been developed, Madam Speaker, that the system has been installed at the Electoral Office, Madam Speaker. It has been tested, the staff have been trained, and the system is ready for deployment, Madam Speaker. We ready, we ready. They have even begun to recruit young persons, 15 young persons, I'm told, to serve as enrollment officers. So what are we waiting for? What are they waiting on, Madam Speaker? They are waiting on the, the legislation, Madam Speaker. 
what they are waiting on to move full speed ahead and start the confirmation process, start issuing the ID cards, Madam Speaker. But they cannot do so unless and until the legislation has been passed by this parliament to enable them to proceed, Madam Speaker. Now, Madam Speaker, the legislation in question was reviewed by the Electoral Commission over several months, clause by clause, line by line. And when they completed their review, Madam Speaker, it came back to the government. And the Chief Elections Officer was empowered by the Commission to work with the AG's office to finalize the legislation, Madam Speaker. And he did so. And we came here with it. But the opposition, they blocked it, Madam Speaker. The, people, the same people who want electoral reform, the same people who want ID cards, the same people who want the voters list to be cleaned up, Madam Speaker. But the legislation that is necessary for that to be done, they don't want it to be passed, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the electoral office is ready. We must give them the tools they need to do their work. We must put the legislation in place to empower them to begin the, the re-registration and national ident the confirmation and, and identification card process. Now, Madam Speaker, I heard the opposition leader say that all re-registration of voters must be done by the commission exclusively in Dominica and sh should be done within six months or less, in essence. Right, Madam Speaker? So essentially, Madam Speaker, this is what he's saying. What he is saying to all our registered voters who live overseas, that if you want to continue to vote in Dominica, you will have six months to find the money to come down to Dominica to re-register. Whether you can get time off from your work, whether you can afford to come, if you don't come to Dominica to re if you don't come to Dominica to re-register. Re Your name will be taken off the list. This is what we want to. This is what we want to say to Dominicans, Madam Speaker. Members, please, can we conduct ourselves with a little more decorum? Members, please, hush your mouth across the table. Is not doing well. I'm the one to be saying hush your mouth and I'm not saying it. Well, anyway, I'm saying it now. Well, please be quiet. But I'll say it in a parliamentary way. Please be quiet so that the member can make her contribution. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, our Dominican citizens who are out there working hard, who are sending remittances to their family, Madam Speaker, who are sending remittances to help to build this country, Madam Speaker, the leader of the opposition is saying to them, I don't care how you do it. Find the money and come home within six months to re-register. If you cannot do that, you're out. That's it for you. Don't think you're going to be able to vote in the elections again. Is that the message we want to send to our hard-working Dominicans outside there, Madam Speaker? Ma Madam Speaker, this government led by Roosevelt Kerritt will never allow that, Madam Speaker. Never. We will not be party to any unjustified disenfranchisement of people, Madam Speaker. We will not be party to any denial of the right of citizens to vote in their country's elections, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in some countries, people have died to get the right to vote. So this is not something that you can take lightly, Madam Speaker. This is a fundamental right of a citizen, the right to vote. And the leader of the opposition wants to take away that right from people who care about their country. People who sacrifice for their country, Madam Speaker. People who come home every election time to vote, Madam Speaker, so that their voice can be heard, Madam Speaker. That is not right, Madam Speaker, and this government will never allow that, Madam Speaker. So now, Madam Speaker, I want to speak briefly on the issue that was raised about the new U.S. requirement. And Madam Speaker, I do not understand, and I will never understand why the leader of the opposition 
cannot bring himself to say good things about this country, Madam Speaker. Mm -hmm. Why he persists in portraying the country in the worst light possible, Madam Speaker. Mm -hmm. Madam Speaker, the United States informed the world at large that they are establishing a new set of standards regarding the information that all foreign government should share with the U.S. government. All, without exception, Madam Speaker. To allow the U.S. government to verify the identity of all foreign travelers and immigration applicants to ascertain that they do not pose a threat to the U.S. security or public safety. And so, Madam Speaker, they sent a questionnaire to all government to fill out, to help them assess whether countries meet those standards. And Dominica is no exception. They sent it to us as well, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, the full text of the communication and the questionnaire was in the media. It was in the media for everybody to see and read. So I have no doubt, Madam Speaker, that the leader of the opposition saw exactly what the U.S. was asking. How does he react, Madam Speaker? He writes to the United States, Madam Speaker, and tells the United States, in effect, that Dominica issues passports to people from terrorist hotspots and issues, and issues diplomatic passports to criminals and that Dominica is compromising the global security architecture against terrorism. Can you believe that, Madam Speaker? That a citizen of Dominica and more so a leader of the opposition would send something like that to the U.S. And Madam Speaker, and Madam Speaker, he will probably say that he didn't write it to the U.S. But when you write the Prime Minister and copy it to the U.S. Ambassador, that is exactly what you are doing, Madam Speaker. And all Dominicans should condemn that, Madam Speaker. I have seen... Madam Speaker, I have seen that letter, and I am disgusted by that letter, Madam Speaker. I am disgusted that a Dominican would write such a letter about, about Dominica. You will encourage people to sue you, but then when they, they get a judgment, you don't want to pay it. <laughs> The countries that the leader of the opposition refers to as terrorist hotspots. Madam Speaker, some of those countries are the very countries that many other countries, including the countries of Europe and to some extent the US, they have accepted hundreds of thousands of migrants from those countries, Madam Speaker. Those same countries. Madam Speaker, we've approved a few thousand who have gone through three levels of due diligence, Madam Speaker. They've gone through three levels of due diligence before we have approved them, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we have been at pains to explain the process for months. The, the leader of the opposition has heard it from ministers. He has heard the process described by the public officers, Madam Speaker. But no, he insists, Madam Speaker, on trying to undermine the CBI program. He insists on painting a picture of this country as a threat to the United States. Why would you do something like that, Madam Speaker? Why would you do something like that about a country you claim to love? After all, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, what the leader of the opposition doesn't know, or what he doesn't care to know, Madam Speaker, is that we cooperate closely with the United States, Madam Speaker. They are very aware even if he does not want to be aware of the processes that we follow, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in fact, when the, the U.S. Embassy called, they called me, Madam Speaker, to alert me before they sent the questionnaire. And they said to me, we have to send your questionnaire. But they told me that I know that for a lot of those things that they, we're asking about, you all already provide the information. But we have to send it, because that is the, that is the instructions that we got that it must be sent to all governments so that we can gather the information that's necessary. What in that, Madam Speaker, 
you must take and send the kind of letter that Lennox Linton sent to the US Embassy, the leader of the opposition sent to the US Embassy, Madam Tr uh, Speaker, trying to say that Dominica poses a, a security threat to the United States? After all, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I wish to say that Dominica has responded to the US fully. We have responded to the US fully within the time requested, Madam Speaker. But Madam Speaker, while some people are bent on destroying, the government is focused on building. Madam Speaker, this government is focused on putting more money in the hands of its people to build Dominica, to build their businesses, to educate our people, to empower the youth, and to empower our professionals, Madam Speaker. This is what this government is doing, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, on that note, I just want to touch briefly on the income tax measures and say that I am very pleased to see the increase in the tax threshold from 25,000 to 30,000, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, that is putting more money in the hands of people. This will benefit all of us who pay income tax, Madam Speaker. Those of us who earn $2,500 or less a month will no longer pay income tax, Madam Speaker. And everybody else will pay a little less. So, Madam Speaker, it looks like we will have even more to look forward to because the Honourable Prime Minister has indicated that he wants the new National Fiscal Policy Panel to look into the possibility of creating a flat tax rate, Madam Speaker. And if, if, if I understand what the Prime Minister has indicated in his budget correctly, Madam Speaker, he's asking them to consider removing the 25% um, band and that tax will only be paid by people in the, who reach the 30% tax ban, Madam, Madam Speaker. So it may very well be, Madam Speaker, that if that is introduced, that your first $75,000 will be tax-free, Madam Speaker. And that would be a fantastic thing, Madam Speaker. These are the progressive things that this government is thinking about while other people are trying to destroy it. But Madam Speaker, I will borrow a phrase from my colleague, Dr. Mack, the Honorable Minister for Economic Planning. This budget, Madam Speaker, is a people-centered budget. That is what it is, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, just to touch very briefly on the Ministry of Foreign and Caricom Affairs, Madam Speaker, we continue to work with our partners to achieve government's policy. Uh, we continue to pursue alliances with countries who can provide technical and financial assistance to Dominica as well as funding for different projects. Madam Speaker, over the last year, we have established relations with two new European countries, notably Turkmenistan and the Krish Re Republic. And uh, we are also currently considering establishing relations with three more. Madam Speaker, we have sought permission also to establish a full consulate in Guadeloupe. As you may know, we have been functioning with an honorary cons consulate in Guadeloupe for many years. And Madam Speaker, I want to, to thank the Shadiers who have been provided sterling service to the Commonwealth of Dominica over the years, Madam Speaker. They have done a fantastic job. But it's time now, Madam Speaker, for, the, for us to allow them to retire um, comfortably and to put somebody in there who can provide full consulate services, Madam Speaker. So, we hope to get the green light soon so that we can continue to provide support and indeed expand services to all our nationals in the French territories, Madam Speaker. We also continue to participate in important discussions at the regional, multilateral, and international level on a variety of important issues, Madam Speaker, such as climate change, the new EU ACP relationship, among many others, Madam Speaker. And we we also look forward to the successful election of Dr. Carissa Etienne to serve another term as the director of PAHO. Madam Speaker, Dr. Etienne has provided dynamic leadership at that organization. And um, she, has, she has worked very hard on important health issues affecting our region. 
and of course, we anticipate the full support for her re-election later this year. So we want to um, keep her in our prayers and to let her know that the people of Dominica are supporting her 100%, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as I conclude, I wish to state that although the opposition has tried their best to deny that this is an exciting budget, Madam Speaker, it is an exciting budget, Madam Speaker. The majority of Dominicans are pleased with the budget. Some on the other side are actually pleased with the budget. They may not want to say so, but they are pleased with the budget, Madam Speaker. There is something in this budget for everybody, Madam Speaker. And the government has set out a clear plan to realize a modern, prosperous Dominica. I am happy to be part of this team, Madam Speaker, and I fully endorse and support this budget. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you.